I hit live. It says we're live. We're live! Ooh. I know, right? Hello. It's been so long since we've gone live. It has been a really long time. Two years. It was mm. March of 2021. Wow. That's a long time with no live. Possibly February, but it was definitely no later than March. Wow. Well, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. And we are back to welcome Nina aboard. Yay. Woo. Insert applause here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think anyone is watching yet. So we'll just riff until they do. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, we got one. Woo woo. I don't who know. We who got it. Is. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. <up. laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> okay. So, Nina, welcome to the Dolls of Horror family. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> we are so excited that you are here with us. And you've already I... done amazing work. I know. Aww, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here. Oh, we just love you. <laughs> and love your work too. Like I've listened to the three three episodes I think you've edited. They yeah. are amazing. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. So awesome to have like a like a cool new ghoul friend to talk mm -hmm. horror movies with too. I'm like so excited for you to like be a guest on an episode. I'm excited. There's a few episodes coming up I'm really looking forward to because I know we all have different opinions on some things. So it's going to be Ooh. fun. Yeah, it's great to have it's great to have you on board because you are a horror fan. Mm -hmm. You are and you want to watch the movies that we're going to cover before we actually do them. You actually watched Basket Case 3 when we were doing it. Yeah. And you watch the other one that we were doing, The Leprechaun 4. You actually want to be a part of this and watch the, the movies we're doing. It makes it more fun when you're editing. Like, you actually know what you're they're talking about. So yeah. it's like, totally. I love it. <laughs> and I can't wait to have you on as a guest as well, because this is going to be fun. <sighs> yeah. There's one I was talking to you about that I saw like right when I came on and I was like, we have to do an episode of this. Like, I know it just came out, but we have to do this. Yeah. Was so. it the, um, Skinnamarink. Skinnamarink. I haven't yes. seen it yet, but I really, really want to, I keep hearing things about it. So, so when you watch it, do your homework. Cause we'll be doing okay. an episode soon on that. I also okay. think Nina should be on our Suspiria remake episode. Ooh, I do too. That's going <laughs> to watch us go off the rails and it'd be like two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a three hour episode. I was going to say it might be a three. <laughs> Let it happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a three hour movie. It's going to be a long episode. Probably. <laughs> I'm excited right. to hear your guys' take. So I hope my I'm take changes because right now my take is it sucks. But I hope it <laughs> Hope. I haven't given it another chance, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I watched it that one time, and I had to watch it in three separate parts because I hated it, and it was so mm. long, and I was, like, so bored, and I damn near fast-forwarded through it. Oh. See, I saw it in I... the theater, so oh. I... Oh, no. I was, I, was in, I was in for the ride, you know what I mean? And then, like, it was one of those movies where, like, I love Suspiria so much. I was so, like, back and forth about how I felt about this. So I've been mm -hmm. hearing, you know, they've wanted to remake Suspiria forever. And I was always yeah. like, mm -mm, nope, don't like that at all. Don't like it. And then as this one started, I started to hear details. And I'm like, Tom York is doing some of the music? That's kind of yeah. neat. I like Tilda Swinton. Okay, I'll give it a chance. And yeah, kind of. Kind of stick with my first opinion on that one, but I did. I was stuck in the theater for it. Oh, I had I bought it. Oh, uh -huh. I, I had to buy a DVD because it wasn't streaming of it anywhere, and I wanted to see it. So yeah. I had to buy the DVD used, which I did, and I want my nine dollars back. And I'll give you nine dollars for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, after we do this episode, you can have it. Okay. <laughs> I want my nine dollars and two and a half hours back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. It is time to dive into some questions. In the chat right now, we have JD Smurf. We got John Morgan. Hey John. Hey. And Froy. Oi? <laughs> 
Hi. Who says they love the Warlock episode? We haven't done Warlock yet. Do you mean perhaps the Julian Sands interview? Because we haven't covered Warlock yet. Anyway. In my heart, in my heart, I've covered it so many times. We have to do that one again. And Billy, Billy wants to be on that one with us. Mm-hmm. He always has. So yeah. Fun. I know. Um, if you guys have any questions for our Nina, drop them in the chat and we'll get them asked. All right. Jamie, you want to take it away? Well, um, you know, we always kind of like to ask this when we have new guests on or new folks on. Um, so, you know, tell us a little bit about your horror journey. How did this all start for you? Um, it probably started when I was a little kid. I was just obsessed with fairy tales, especially the darker, the better. And uh-huh. um, I had a, I think I actually learned how to read to like grim fairy tales. So um, <laughs> that's where it started. And then let's see. Um, you know, just watching reruns of the Munsters and Beetlejuice, and then oh yes, yeah. And um, my mom actually introduced me to the slashers like Freddy and Michael and Jason when I was like nine, oh. and it just it spiraled from there. I think the first time oh. I saw Texas Chainsaw, my dad rented the videotape from Blockbuster, and we watched it together, oh. and that was like the one movie my dad was like this movie scared me to death when I saw it as a kid. So I was watching it. And I'm like, this is, <laughs> I don't know why you were scared, but um, I just, I'm ready for some people to die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it started. <laughs> ready for Franklin Aww. to die. Yeah. Yeah. He was the main one. <laughs> of course. That's awesome. Uh, I, what age were you? Do you remember? When I saw Chainsaw. Like when you, um, yeah, when you first saw your first horror film, like probably eight or nine. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I believe I was eight. I came a little later, but I started with like those gateway kind of things, like yeah. the monsters, Beetlejuice, Goosebumps, Gremlins, all those kind of things. Yeah, I love Gremlins. Oh my god, yeah. me too. <laughs> I I've talked about this before. My first horror experience was um, sneaking out into the living room to watch killer clowns from outer space and i saw a scene i don't know which one and i got scared and i ran back to my bed and i hid under the covers i was five ish um fast forward three years later saw suspiria from then on hooked (laughs) hooked what a great andre's in the house Ooh, andre used my the wrong name for me (laughs) (laughs) he spelled it wrong too hi (laughs) he's one of the few that knows my first name shh now everyone knows rude (laughs) so rude (laughs) all right so what are some of your favorite horror films oh it may sound cliche but it's the number one has been in for quite some time. It's The Exorcist, the original 1973. And Classic. Yeah, I remember watching it, and it's not scary. It's just the relationship between the mother and the daughter, and then, of mm-hmm. course, the priest. I love it. And it's just, you you really feel like, you feel like Ellen Burstyn by mm-hmm. the halfway point, because it just, like what can she do like she's taken them to every expert she can think of and yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's the real horror honestly Mm -hmm. just real life horror and of course Suspiria um I discovered that much later I actually saw the remake first and then that brought me to the original wow yeah but I I love them both for different reasons um Invasion of the Body Snatchers too. Which one? The original. The fifties. Awesome. Yeah. The fifties. That one, one and the and the seventies one. Yeah. Yeah. I love them both. Oh, I love that one too. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Those are I, awesome picks. Those are so good. Yeah. So good. What's your favorite franchise? Meaning more <sighs> than two movies. Could <laughs> could have just two if it if more than one movie. So it could have just two. I consider that a franchise. Okay. Um, 
It used to be Michael Myers. Okay. Um, sadly, that has changed because of some recent developments. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it is, it's now Terrifier. I, I know it's it. only two, but <laughs> he's working on three, dang it. He is. So he is. it's Terrifier. Uh, think, such a good franchise. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to yeah. be so good. And didn't he say in our panel, I think he said something along the lines of um, he's uh, th thinking about four movies for Terrifier. Yeah. Four I think so, yeah. yeah. He said he might have enough content to do four. Yeah, because so. he doesn't want to run it to death. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so we have at least two more to look forward to. Oh, so goodness. exciting yeah and what are uh what are some of your favorite like sub genres of horror <laughs> um horror comedy for sure um uh, love i love frankenhooker yeah yes. <laughs> um supernatural horror definitely love that mm -hmm. awesome yeah what is your favorite villain I think it's obvious. It's it's Art the Clown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why? Uh, because he's he has no rhyme or reason. He just gets a kick out of it. He quite does. literally mm -hmm. sometimes. So I just, I love him. Yeah. Uh, from the very first time I saw him in the diner, I'm just like, this guy is intense. <laughs> <laughs> the diner scene. I love it. I, yeah. you know, it's like, we knew when we saw when we saw that clown sitting in that diner, we knew that we had found the one. We just knew. Yeah. Sometimes you just know. You just look and you just know. <laughs> He's just special. He's very he special. Is. Oh my gosh. And oh. um what about a favorite final what about a favorite final girl? Um well with Sienna Lauren Lavera coming out mm -hmm. in Terrifier 2, it's become her, but um before that it was Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. Oh, so good. Yeah. Do you have a favorite not so final girl? That's a lot tougher because they are more dead than alive. <laughs> that is really hard. I don't even know. <laughs> I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> Jamie, what's your not favorite not so final girl? Oh my gosh. Um, definitely Helen from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um mm -hmm. I just think her chase scene is so good. You're like rooting for her and she fights so hard and, you know, uh, she almost makes it like she sees safety and she just doesn't get there. Mm -hmm. uh, I love me a not so final girl. So I love her. I love Tatum too. Great yeah. Yeah. not so final girl. Mm -hmm. Tatum's a good one. Yeah. Um, I like Casey a lot from the first scream for the similar reason, as you said, for I know what you did last summer. You're just mm -hmm. rooting for her the whole time and such a shock the first time you see that movie it's so I crazy know. you don't expect the first person you see who's on the poster to be the first victim especially yeah. when it's drew barrymore I know. and yeah. she was she was like the really really big name i feel like of this at the time everybody's yeah. a big name but she was the she was the one that sold like the poster and everything so not expecting that yeah love her <laughs> oh yeah I don't know. For me, does Nancy Thompson count because she did technically come back as herself in sev part seven? I've wondered that too. <laughs> you know, but as far as the fictional nightmare universe, um, she died because Heather wasn't the same character as Nancy. So I'm thinking she might be my favorite not so final girl. Oh. I'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also the Paula Marshall character in Hellraiser 3. Oh. Mm -hmm. I yeah. loved her. And she put up a good fight. And then she got turned into this amazingly beautiful Cenobite. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta have She's her. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, um, okay. John oh, wait. Morgan. Was there a question? John Morgan says the great thing about Art the Clown is he's silent like all the slasher villains, but he's also got personality, which is very true. And you can almost yeah. like hear what he's thinking, which is a testament to David, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's so expressive. Um, 
Hi, Suzanne. My old coworker from Bakersfield is on. Hey. Suzanne, how you doing? <laughs> Let me see. John also says everybody hates Franklin. <laughs> it's <laughs> and true. <laughs> JD asks everybody, what's our favorite horror movie? So Nina answered, Jamie. Uh, definitely original Suspiria, um, mm -hmm. but some of my other favorites that are pretty high up on that list, um, American Werewolf in London, my first R-rated movie I ever saw. I watched that one with my dad, um, so I have like just have like sweet memories about it. It's my like go-to movie if I'm upset or not feeling well. I'm like, it's American Werewolf in London time. Um, I also really love the be uh, the Beyond. I'm a huge Fulci fan. Um, love me Argento too, but Fulci is like extra nasty um so i really love fulci and i think the beyond is probably my is my favorite fulci movie so those three are way up at the top but when i love movies i love them like really big um mm -hmm. if if any of you have listened to a lot of the show then you know that like i typically rank things high so i have a pretty big favorites list but those those three come to mind like first yeah for me i'd say i mean everyone knows that candy man is my number one always <laughs> it's a beautiful film to watch it's a beautiful film to listen to the score is amazing tony todd so is good. hot yes yeah <laughs> hello <laughs> david um, naughton is my hottie from uh -huh. American mm -hmm. as well as john saxon <laughs> oh <laughs> yes so here's the deal when jamie and i rank the hotness of guys we call it the js scale <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Andre. And Bye. when we come, when we in our real lives come into a hottie, uh, <laughs> we text each other and saying, this guy is so hot on the JS scale. He's a, yeah, whatever. He's an eight, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, now, I'm, now I'm thinking of him. Uh, do, thank do you, you have, Summer. You're welcome. Always here to help. <laughs> do you still have the beautiful pictures of the JS on your phone? You know I do. It's like it's like him. It's like him, like in the ocean or something. And there's like water, like splashing on him. <laughs> it's true. Um, yes. Yeah. And other favorites. Um, Candyman is my number one. I love Suspiria for the origin of it's what made me love horror. But I don't think I can can consider it a favorite favorite. I don't watch it all the time. Mm -hmm. Um. The Nightmare on Elm Street series as a whole is my favorite. It's definitely my favorite series. Um, and I want to say uh, Hellraiser 3. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Specifically 3. Guys, I know it's not a great movie, but it's my favorite. Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great movie. It's so much <laughs> yeah. fun. That nightclub massacre. I mean, come on. Yeah. perfect and it really ins <laughs> it inspired a lot of um kills and movies that followed like i think i i would choose to believe that the party massacre in wishmaster was inspired by that because some of the kills were very similar yeah mm. so, i can see that yeah maybe so, even the club scene in collection yes Oh, hey. I thought of that, yeah. too. Yeah. I thought of that, too. Metamortis. Hellraiser 3 is amazing. One of my favorites. So thank you. There we go. Everyone <laughs> the people gives have me, spoken. <laughs> everyone gives me hate, Metamortis, when I say this. And You're among friends now. Yeah, I'm in the same place, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I don't care. I'll fight a bitch. Like, it's my favorite. It, it's I, I know it's not the best film in the series but it's my favorite um john says tell jamie that i rewatched dark glasses and it gets better with a rewatch oh you know what i actually was thinking about rewatching it i almost put that on the other night so um good to know and i we're on the same wavelength here because i literally almost rewatched it like two nights ago <laughs> <laughs> john is always on the same wavelength as us I know that, like, literally, I was just going to put this on, like, two nights ago. So that's good to hear. That's good to know. All right. I'll let you know what I thought of it on the second go. <laughs> oh, so good. Jamie, take it away. 
Okay, so um, I know that you two lovely ladies met at a con. Um, so tell me a little bit about why you love going to the cons and kind of like your history there, how you kind of started going to cons. Okay. Um, my first con was Kansas City Crypticon. Um, it's a fairly decent size. And um, I actually heard about it through a, a friend of mine. Um, she was like, hey, there's all these uh, really cool celebrities and stuff there. And you get to see all these vendors that have skulls and bones and stuff. And you should come. And I was like, oh, okay. So um, the year I went, uh, Bill Mosley was there. And it was Sid Haig's last mm -hmm. year. Um, mm -hmm. So I got to meet him before he passed, thankfully. Um, and it was just a great experience. You get to meet mutual horror fans and you get to find new vendors. And um, I've developed a pretty long list of vendors that I do my Christmas shopping throughout the year from. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it's just a great community. There's nothing like it. And the more cons you go to, just I've met so many people through horror cons, like people I would never have met elsewhere. So it's perfect. Totally. I was just explaining to a kind of non horror person um, what cons are like. And I was saying, you know, it's, it's seriously like the, the warmest, like friendliest mm -hmm. community and situation I think I've ever been a part of like so mm -hmm. warm, cool people. I wish, I wish I had like thousands of dollars on me every time I go so that I could buy everything from the vendors. Cause they have such amazing stuff. My like my little guy right here was definitely a con purchase. Um, I bought yeah. way too many things at the cons. <laughs> <laughs> that and was I've been to... this last Chicago one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to other cons before, just non horror related, and they are do not compare in the slightest. So, you yeah. know, Doug Bradley said that in our in our interview with him, he said the horror con fans are the best con fans and yeah. he said even better than comic con fans he said quote comic con fans are weird <laughs> 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 and he's like in here a bunch of people in black cotton come up to me <laughs> and give me money <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hobbs Horror wants to know what's everyone, what's everyone's new connection here? Seen a couple of your videos from time to time. Okay, good question. Jamie and I co-host the Dolls of Horror podcast. We also host celebrity panels at the Days of the Dead conventions. We Nina, also text a lot about <laughs> horror movies. We're best friends. <laughs> we're best friends. Yeah, Hobbs. Horror fans are the best, and we are family. Um, Nina is new to the Dolls of Horror team, and she is our new producer, and she's kicking ass. So, <laughs> hell yeah, that's our that's our connection. Nina and I met in Days of the Dead Vegas a few weeks ago, and uh, it was like instant friendship. And I said to Jamie, I said, I just met this girl; she's going to be great. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, I'm next. Like, <laughs> bring her on. Yes, yes. Uh, Christy, my friend Christy, my coworker Christy from Starbucks, and now I work with her at my day job, wants to know when we will be discussing the oboe. <laughs> you know, the instrument. <laughs> she plays it. Oh, anytime. I mean, we should have a whole section on that. Christy, you should come on and educate us on the oboe sometime. Please do. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm thinking oboe and I'm thinking like Peter and the Wolf. And I'm pretty sure the oboe was represented like the duck or something. <laughs> Peter and the Wolf, anybody? Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Silk is in the house. He has as a podcast ah. as well. And he hey. says hello. Much love and support. Hi, Mike. Much love. Yeah. <laughs> Christy says yes, duck. <laughs> yes <laughs> i like i like that sound okay the duck was a good character too so i'm team obo <laughs> nina i have another question for you yeah what's your favorite final guy Ooh, that's hard <laughs> there's not you know, as many of those but there there's not some. but there's one that comes to mind immediately and it's uh jeff daniel phillips in 31 okay Hey, that's um, a good one. 
it's funny because like when you first start watching the movie or at least for me i hated him hated yeah. him and was ready for him to die but like his arc is incredible and from i heard rob zombie said um that jeff was supposed to be just a minor character but he kept doing things that were impressing him on the set that he mm. wrote him in for like another scene and each day jeff would come in and ready to die and he was like no we got we got more and um he ends up saving you know sherry in the end and it's i love him he's great yeah. in that movie so definitely hit jeff Jamie, yeah. do you have a not so final guy god or final I guy I know. I was like, wait, okay, so now we're throwing not so final guys into the mix. How am I going to choose? There's a million of them. I know. Um, gosh, I'm like trying to think of who my favorite final oh, boy Suzanne. might be. Mm. I like our guy in Killer Clown since we were talking about that. He lives. <laughs> <laughs> I, for, I gotta, I gotta say, um, Kevin Spiritus in Friday 7. That's he's, a good one. He's yeah. so handsome. Very. <laughs> Still <laughs> is. Yeah. Still a hottie. Oh my god. <laughs> Way up on the JS scale. <laughs> Way up, like a ten. <laughs> Amazing actor too. My God, so good. Oh yeah. Okay, and so um, I was also wondering because we talked about this a little bit. We talked about eyeballs just a little bit. So when it comes to like gore and special effects, what are your favorite kind of gory things definitely eyeballs um yes. just because like i don't like anybody touching their eye i don't i can't even look at somebody when they're putting contacts in so it just grosses me out um trying to think like that fingernails getting ripped off Ooh. um can't stand it and then just like bones cracking like oh that's a good one yeah so <laughs> Sound, sound really matters. Definitely sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what, what makes something scary for you, Nina? Uh, probably the possibility that it could actually happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like supernatural stuff doesn't really get to me, but just the idea of maybe just you and something else just going head to head, like that's scary and just running from something that like you don't know what it's going to do to you if it catches you but it's not going to be good so <laughs> <laughs> and that is good. body horror as well yeah. yeah do you have a favorite body horror movie it's so hard to pick one just one your tops i you're i really like this there's Suspiria no wrong remake. answer here I you really just... like the Suspiria remake because there's the scene where um, Dakota Johnson is dancing and then right as she starts to dance, the other girl that's like trying to escape, um, she's in the room with the mirrors and like she starts to contort her body mm -hmm. like in the same fashion that Dakota Johnson is dancing. Mm -hmm. And I love that scene so much. It actually like, like I had to look away the first time I saw it and um found out later that the actress that played her was an actual contortionist so oh well, that's good yeah. so she was doing it herself it, most of it yeah mm -hmm. so awesome Jamie, I love what, body. Are, what are your favorite body horrors i know you oh i was gonna say i really like body horrors too um Honestly, I kind of consider like Starry Eyes a bit of a bar body horror. I really like that one. Of course, you got The Fly. That's just like super gross and like awesome. Um, and man, I just, you feel so much for her because she's seeing him like, she can't do anything, you know? Um, yeah. So it, it breaks my heart. Um, yeah. So you get that like secondhand like terror of body horror like through her, which I really, really love too. And um, oh my gosh, I was just thinking of one um teeth um i really liked teeth um i would definitely consider that a body horror as yeah. well um, oh yeah and i just thought it was like a perfect kind of like metaphor and everything um so that one i thought was like really smart and um a body horror in a really like different way those are just oh, yeah. some i love body horrors i kind of consider um werewolves to be a bit of body horror too because it's your body transforming you can't stop it and I love werewolves, so there's multiple werewolf movies I would put in that category too. 
and every transformation is different. So it's perfect. Which is so beautiful. I love me a good werewolf transformation. American Werewolf in London is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the best. Speaking so good. of werewolves, I was just watching Ginger Snaps tonight. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself as I was making my notes, this is very body horror. Totally. And then I'm like, this is also werewolf, which makes sense. And I said, I can't wait to talk to Jamie about the body horrorness of this movie. <laughs> I love it. Seriously, to me, like body horror is one of the scarier subgenres because, like, it's your body. Like, you can't escape it. Like, you're trapped in it in many yeah. ways. And it's like when it turns against you, it also, it, I feel like it just like touches on this, like, you know, mortal mortality that we all have too, right? Because, like, you can't mm -hmm. escape it, can't really do anything about it. That's scary. I, I wouldn't want to turn into a werewolf. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> as cool as it is to watch it on film i would not want that to happen to me <laughs> no 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 i also i mean we'll talk about this more in the episode but ginger snaps had such an interesting take on the werewolf where it wasn't you turn into a werewolf on the full moon you slowly turn into the werewolf over 28 days and then you're the the wolf forever <laughs> that's even more yeah. frightening yeah Definitely. <laughs> tough break on that one yeah. <laughs> all right jamie next oh up. um yeah so you know i was really curious since you're a new producer tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about how you kind of learned how to do that like what's your back like how did you learn how to do the producing stuff what got you interested in that yeah well um honestly it was just i remember the first time you know youtube came out i was I'm not going to tell you how old I was because you're already like, <laughs> you were, she called me a baby yesterday, but uh, I was just messing around She's with a so friend. Young. <laughs> <laughs> I was just messing around with a friend uh, with editing, I think in like Windows Movie Maker. That's how long ago it was. And, wow. Um, we just like, we're making our own videos for YouTube and um, that's kind of where it started. And just, I've always gotten I've gotten deeper into it as time has gone on but it kind of just found me I didn't really look for it so that's what's really cool about it I love yeah. it so awesome cool. um what else I got here we talk epic lines on our podcast and that's my favorite segment <laughs> do you have some favorite epic lines from any movie oh yeah, any horror movie yes um i i had a feeling you might ask this question so i prepared something you've heard me <laughs> ask it in panels <laughs> that's why <laughs> yes um it's the opening monologue from 31 with richard Brake. but that was jamie's epic line when we did that movie I think yeah. so, yeah. It was. yeah. It's so the good. The whole thing yeah. is great, but specifically the I'm not here to make you happy. I'm not here to listen to amused response, and I'm certainly not here to brighten your dismal day. Yeah. I'm here to fucking kill you. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Jamie's favorite part, I think, was there is no popcorn in hell or something like There's that. There's no popcorn yeah. in hell. It's been yes. a long time since I've seen them. I haven't seen it since we did it, and I think that was Same. in 2020. <laughs> It's one of my faves. Yes. So good. Do you have any other honorable mentions? Um, probably Bill Mosley. Um, Devil's Rejects. Uh, God, there's so many to choose from, uh -huh. but Seriously. it's it's probably um it's probably the same one we've been using for the transitions. The you better have some brilliant Mark Twain shit because that shit's getting chiseled on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Isn't he the greatest? He's <laughs> awesome. He's so I, down to earth in person. I, I love there's no ice cream in your fucking future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's me talking to myself on my diet. <laughs> <laughs> every day i hear his voice in my head when i want to reach for the junk food i was like you're right bill you're right oh, girl <laughs> we're not doing it girl that's actually been a running joke between me and some friends of mine i'm just there was it was one day last summer i was like is there any ice cream in my fucking future and jimmy was <laughs> like yeah we can do ice cream <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Love it. Uh, Hobbs wants to know, do we consider Teen Wolf um, a horror movie? I consider it, me personally, more of a comedy. Comedy? Horror comedy? Yeah, it's, I I it's a horror it, comedy. Yeah, I consider yeah. it more of a comedy, more of a family comedy, honestly. <laughs> my my family was monitoring the horror I watched where they let me watch that at a very young age. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's got, um, it's got horror elements, though. I definitely think it would be like a horror comedy, but yeah. a horror comedy for all the ages. Yeah. <laughs> And Hobbs also says, what about one of his favorites? The Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> so Nina and I were just talking about this last night. Rocky Horror is consistently my favorite musical, both in movie form and on the stage. I, I waver and rotate other ones out, but for the last 23 years since I saw it, it has consistently been my favorite. What are your guys' thoughts on Rocky? I love so it. Good. Yeah. I yeah. it's definitely one where um it's just such a classic. I, I think I can quote that thing in my sleep. I love it so much. So. <laughs> it's just uh it's I will never I will never not want to watch it, basically. Like I would never say no if somebody was like let's throw it on i would never ever put a stop to that um no. love it never tire of it just brilliant um i don't even know what to say it's so good <laughs> it is so good and it holds up and it gets better with every time and what's really interesting about rocky horror is it really um it, it keeps getting new generations of fans every year yeah totally you know so it's never going to die it and that's a beautiful beautiful thing absolutely yeah and the message behind it is so good oh, too so wow. yeah it's just great um let's see here jd says good night 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 and mitch says have, hello have some fun nightmares because they're free horror movies <laughs> in your head <laughs> that you write, slashers. direct, and produce. Hello, complete control. <laughs> Mr. Bones says, "Kill Kreitz." <laughs> I'm assuming he means that's one of his favorite lines. <laughs> um, Mitch is in the house. We know Mitch from the conventions. Hey, Mitch. Hey. Uh. JD says he will for sure. And Hobbs is obsessed with Rocky Horror. We have another one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You we passed. Should do, we should do a Rocky Horror watch party sometime. We sing along. <sighs> That'd be, be so much fun. That'd be so fun. I know. Ugh. Okay. Jamie. Yeah. So um since you've since you've been doing the cons, um, who are some of your favorite celebs that you've met and who do you really still want to meet? Okay. Um let's see. I really love talking to Richard Brake. Um yeah. I got to meet him last year in Chicago and he was just the sweetest. Same. Um, yeah. I think we spent like fifteen minutes just standing at his table chatting. He was Aww. the sweetest. Um Sid Haig was wonderful, um, so kind, and, like, he wasn't in a rush to get you mm. out of the way so we could move on to the next person, which is not always the case. Um, people I still want to meet. Let's see. I really, I need to meet Tony Todd and Tobin Bell. Um, <gasps> yes. I, I had the to meet chance Tobin. to meet Tobin, had the chance to meet him, but his line by the time I finally got to his table was, like, all the way down a staircase. I was like, I'm going to pass on that one. Um, so hopefully we'll meet him in the future. And um, God, there's somebody else. Who was it? I mean, I the remember. list is probably huge. It's, it's endless. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're <laughs> going to get to meet somebody that we are all dying to meet soon. And that is uh, Elvira herself, Cassandra yeah. Peterson. 
next oh weekend. Oh, that's so exciting. I just shouted her out for Women's Day in this new morning newsletter I write. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, she's that she everybody knows me as like the spooky, like horror girl, but I'm like, mm, shout out to Elvira. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, she still inspires women today. Yes. She looks so fantastic. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I did love her. I love I did love her little cameo in the Monsters remake. That was so same. sweet. Same. <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> so oh, cute. I haven't seen it yet. You oh, need to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I need to I need to watch it. So I haven't got around to it. Um Hob says he's been Elvira and she is cool in person. Great. Good. Because it's always a bummer when you meet someone and it's a, like not what you wanted. I always yeah. get so nervous before I meet somebody because yeah. I don't want to be let down by this person that I love for forever. So for sure. Thankfully, I haven't had that happen yet. So had it happened a couple of times, but, you know, it has not been very often. Yeah. yeah the times it's had it has happened it's because i already knew it was gonna happen so as bad <laughs> yeah. as that sounds one of them i definitely knew and i know we're talking about the same person <laughs> yeah we won't name names because we right. don't want to do anything yes <laughs> montavious Still. is in the house hey hi <laughs> we need to do a, a a live or an interview with montavious he wants to have us on soon so mm. yeah um okay so another thing that we know that we love in our horror films is music do you have a favorite movie score movie soundtrack i do um it's definitely the original suspiria mm -hmm. yeah i also love reanimator yes that's really good um i i just Anything Full Moon does, the music is always going to be great. But those two are definitely at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, I mean, Jamie. you're speaking to my heart right now. Mm -hmm. The OG Suspiria soundtrack is my absolute favorite. It is so yes. awesome. Uh, um, you know, the Goblin was touring um, and came to Phoenix, which is not too far from me. And I really, really wanted to see it. They were doing Suspiria and I missed it. But man, did I want to see that. Um, and I love the reanimator soundtrack too, like so much. Other than that, you know, Argento's scores, Ar Argento movie soundtracks and scores, I just love. I'm trying to think if it was um, Deep Red that I was watching recently. No, it was um, Tenabre or ten however you say it. Um, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Um, I just rewatched that recently. Really, really love that movie. And the score in that is awesome. It gets like kind of crazy and jazzy, synthy, like craziness. And I like, I'm obsessed and I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. What about you, Summer? Um, the Philip Glass Candyman suite, the whole 35 minutes is it's so good. So oh, good. You talked about this. It needs to be a ballet. Um, I also do love the Suspiria. That's about the same time, about around 35 minutes. I have that on, on CD as well. Um, I really love the Puppet Master theme. Aww. Yes, Puppet Master. And um, God, um, Witchboard. Oh, fun. Yes, <laughs> Witchboard. Not just the score, but the music they play, Bump in the Night, yeah. with Kathleen Wilhoit doing her dance. <laughs> dance of horror anyway yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do that nearly as well like, um, I loved it <laughs> it was close well, but that... I, I just thought of one since we all like horror and musicals okay um, I have to think of it if you ladies could turn any horror movie into a musical do a musical version of any horror movie ever what would it be That's so hard. I know. I'm like trying to think of it too. I could see a really beautiful like Leatherface Chainsaw <laughs> sequence for like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre musical. So that might be pretty fun. <laughs> Part of I... me. Oh, go ahead. Part of me really wants to say Candyman again because I think it could be a very Dracula-esque type story. Beautiful. Think about it. It is very Dracula in its themes and story. Um 
but I've ta I've talked about this so much in, in turning into a ballet already. I'm trying to think of something else. So perhaps Nightmare on Elm Street. I'd watch it. Or Hellraiser. We could have a song about tearing your soul apart. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'd watch I don't know. it. I don't know why my mind went to like a can can scene uh, with we'll tear your soul apart <laughs> and like kick kick you know <laughs> I don't know why that's what popped into my head like chorus line <laughs> I'm for it <laughs> definitely all for I it. actually was gonna say Candyman because I feel like there would definitely be some Dracula vibes to that for sure mm -hmm. um definitely. but outside of that I I think Chucky would be fun Oh As my god, that would be great to be like because it's already got the comedy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be like Annie, but, with, but with a killer doll. Yes, and it I can't be done say, without Don. Yeah. Don Mancini's got to do it. Oh um, yeah, I was gonna say a horror comedy. I think would be really good. I mean, they've done it with like Evil Dead. They've done it with uh, yeah. the Toxic Avenger musical. Mm -hmm. So maybe a trauma. Maybe like. Um, you like surf Nazis must die or like something like that. <laughs> I got one. I got the one. animator. I got one. Uh huh. Frank and Hooker. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frank That's and what Hooker. Came to mind. The musical. <sighs> yeah. Yes. As soon as you said trauma, I was like Frank and Hooker. <laughs> Frank <Yeah>. and Hooker. <laughs> Wanna date would be like the best song ever it'd be so <laughs> catchy <laughs> it'd be like stuck in your head for days <laughs> and there'd be the can can but it would be like there'd be like the body parts there'd be body <laughs> like the barrel of body parts like legs and stuff just oh. random legs kicking <laughs> not even attached to anything yeah. <laughs> so now i'm envisioning the floor show of rocky horror you know but with the body parts instead somebody make this happen <laughs> That's a great question, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 th I think I would love me some Frank and Hooker the musical. Um, Basket Case the musical, anybody? Be awesome. Just a song I... called What's in the Basket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a song oh. about his brother being deformed and how they were separated. There'd be a song like I Don't Like Doctors or like Don't Trust Doctors or something like that. 100 yeah. percent oh my god oh my god we have new people in the chat first of all john morgan says toxic adventure the musical that that yeah. was that was one right yeah mm -hmm. um crystal williams is in the chat hey girl i know Hi. crystal from my job at paisano's way back miss you oh. uh co-worker naisha is here hey and hey. brian I met Brian at Flashback this year, and we quickly became fast friends. So he loves the idea of a fabulous Freddy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metamortis said the Candyman suite is the best. I agree. I definitely agree. And I can't get to the old comments, guys. I apologize. It won't let me go up. Mm. So if you, I didn't address you, send it again, and I'll get to it. <laughs> okay um let's divert for a moment <clears throat> and talk about our favorite musicals because you know <laughs> we have to talk about our favorite musicals nina and i talked about this in length recently but jamie oh well i mean i love um I love Little Shop of Horrors. I love that like so, 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 so much. It might be a little cliche, but I mean, I even have the tattoo, you know? Um, so I, I've always loved that one so, so much. Um, it's funny too, because when I was younger and I was really into musicals, when I was in choir and in drama and everything, I had such a soft spot for West Side Story. Um, I know it's such a classic, like such a classic one, but I just have like a soft spot for it. I also really like th uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie because I saw that and um, it was a really fun show and just adored it. Yeah. West Side Story <laughs> has some great songs in it. Like people it know songs from that and they don't realize it's from West Side Story. So that's actually gr a great choice. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a great, it's a great musical. I mean, it stands the test of time. Great story. Great songs, yeah. great dancing. Yeah. Absolutely. Nina, what's your list? 
in no well, particular order, of course. Yeah. Um, definitely Les Mis. Um, mm -hmm. I love Les Mis. Doesn't matter who's performing it. It always is a show-stopping time. It's great. Um, Repo the Genetic Opera. Okay. That nice. one doesn't get talked about enough. Right. <laughs> love that. Hey, Bill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dracula the musical is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many. No. So many. So many. I had a hard time picking and I was like, no, wait, this. No, no, wait, this. It's got to be this. And it's like, no, no, wait, this. So, yeah. I think Does my top. Yeah. Does Cannibal the Musical count? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Cannibal the Musical. That one's pretty fun. Okay. I just yes. thought of it. Go on. <laughs> 100% it counts. Um, I had Chicago the Musical. I Aww. had Thoroughly Modern Millie. I had Anything Goes. Now, these are all the stage versions I like of course Rocky Horror and tonight I am going to go with Crazy for You for my last pick I love that show yeah. I love some Gershwin and the dancing and that is super so. Aww. so good it's so good it is so good okay Jamie do you have any other questions well, you know, I'm still I'm still getting to know lovely Nina. Um, mm -hmm. so outside outside of horror, what are some of the other things you love out, besides mm -hmm. horror and musicals? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I love to read a lot. It doesn't really matter too much what it is. It doesn't have to be horror. Um, I love to read biographies. I'm actually in the middle of reading Pamela Anderson's right now. Um. So there's that, and then I, I'm a history buff, so I love anything history-related. It doesn't, it can be historical fiction, it can be, you know, nonfiction, it doesn't matter. So, um, and I just love to travel. Um, my boyfriend and I, we went to Texas last year to see the filming locations for the original Chainsaw Massacre. We got to see the gas station, the cemetery, and the house um, oh. where they... Yeah, they relocated it, and um, it's a restaurant now. So we wow. actually ate dinner there. And I don't know if we were supposed to or not, but that night we went upstairs just to, like, see what was up there. And they had, like, a replica of Grandpa sitting in a chair no. looking out the window. No way. Oh. Right. Yeah. That is <laughs> so awesome. cool. Um, yeah. They didn't tell you not to go upstairs, so they didn't say anything. There were no signs, so I went upstairs. <laughs> I would you, too. I know, and it's like you can't put something great like that upstairs and not expect me to want to yeah. come see it. It yeah. wasn't blocked off, so I went right. upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Probably gonna die in a horror movie if I was ever in one. It's yeah. <laughs> Death <laughs> this way. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> got any other questions for our nina jamie oh my god i'm a reporter so i always have like questions okay you um you had this really great pair of earrings um in and the picture that i was looking at like yeah. where's where are some of your favorite like spots to get these cool um earrings i know that you've bought in cool props like just give me your secret somewhere you find your cool stuff <laughs> horror cons <laughs> yeah <laughs> Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, the pentagram earrings I got from Spencer's, actually. Um, nice. But everything else that I wear is normally from vendors. And awesome. the jellyfish earrings are the main ones that get commented on. So I I always just have business cards for the lady, and I'm just handing them out at cons, and she appreciates it. But, yeah, I um, I buy through her, like, all the time. So. Aw, we need to get Aww. some of our own. Yeah. I know. Well, I have some of my my people that I buy stuff from all the time and I'm mm -hmm. always like, send me more cards when you send that because people mm -hmm. always ask and I want to give them your card mm -hmm. so that they yeah. can buy one from you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's easier because like if you just tell them the name, they're not going to remember five minutes from then. Exactly. So just hand them that card. Yeah. <laughs> and the earrings, the neon green pentagram earrings that matched your hair. <laughs> <laughs> love it was like your trademark at days of the dead vegas i'm like oh i remember her because of the earrings yeah Aww. yeah uh every i went up to grim life collectives table uh on friday and i think i had the jellyfish earrings in that day and michael was like you got to come back tomorrow 
with different earrings atop those or don't even bother coming back. <laughs> so <laughs> Saturday, I wore these hoop earrings that had a uh, python vertebrae attached. Oh. So um, I w- came back and I showed them to him. And then Sunday was the pentagram earring. So yeah, it's it's definitely a big thing I do for horror con- conventions. So. I love it. It's nice to, you know, I think like that's really fun about conventions too, is you get to really like wear your love on your sleeve, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many, like, I love like horror dresses and accessories, but I don't really get to wear that to the office too often. I do bring my art, the clown purse, but I leave it in my car for certain assignments. Um, (laughs) So it's really nice to be able to just like wear it and see everybody else like rocking their awesome horror movie t-shirts, dresses, earrings, everything. I just love it. Yeah. You can actually be yourself and just let loose and don't have to worry about people being like, oh, who's that weirdo? (laughs) Yes. So. John is signing off. Good night, John. Bye, John. And Dawn has joined. Hey, girl. Hey. Dawn's one of our loyal fans and also from my hometown. So that's how we met. Um, Oddly, we've never, oddly enough, we've never met in person. But her screen name was Dawn of the Dale. And I said, and I said, is that Oildale or Rosedale? She's like, how do you know that? I'm like, well, I'm from Bakersfield too, so I'm assuming that you are with that kind of kind of name. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, um, I got uh, Jamie some really cool Art the Clown earrings, and um, Don or not Don? Sorry, hi Don. Um, Nina, were you there for the Terrifier panel on Sunday or no? Yes. Yeah. So you saw me change out my earrings. <laughs> I, I Was it the, the art ones with the I, sunglasses? Yes. First I had yeah. art earrings on, but then after that I had the Hellraiser panel. So then I changed my earrings out to Hellraiser earrings. Yes. <laughs> and now we just need to get you every other pair that they have. Um, printy vibes, by the way, guys. Printy they, vibes. <laughs> they make really awesome earrings. Um, I basically want every single pair that they have. <laughs> I wish they'd make like a... Maybe they do, and I just haven't seen it. I'm gonna I'm gonna write to them and ask them if they would like a a Bill Mosley, like a either a chop top mm. or um, an Otis earrings. Wouldn't that yeah. be fun? There's not enough love out there for Otis or chop top. So right. right. Um, we have just implemented a chop top soundbite for our podcast um, this week. It is. For the music segment, Jamie. Oh. Music is my life. (laughs) (laughs) Aw, I love it. I just told you one day, I said, how about we use this? (laughs) Yeah. It's perfect. It it was like meant to be. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Hi, Mark. Mark Conway's on. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, So we're going to wrap this up guys if you have any more questions drop them in the comments we'll be on for a few more minutes um let's ask some good to see you too mark let's ask some fun generic questions like coke or pepsi (laughs) okay is that the question that's the question (laughs) pepsi (laughs) Gosh, I don't, I don't really drink too much soda, and when I do, it's Dr Pepper. So Pepsi. I know it's, I know it's Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> but it's Dr Pepper. Dr Pepper, <laughs> Pepper is a Pepsi product, so we're gonna call Pepsi. Pepsi then. <laughs> I prefer Coke, but I am a cola addict. I'll drink anything. anything. I'm a caffeine addict, coffee addict. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll bring her some like bottles of like iced tea for the for the cons so yeah she likes her coffee and her tea i'm the soda Thank fiend yeah. i like soda i love soda i'll drink anything though like right now i've got a pepsi because that's what was on sale but i'll drink whatever 
I'm rocking a nice tea right now. EGs, y'all. <laughs> Tucson, Tucson classic. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, what is that? It's a sandwich shop, but I thought it here. was Sonic for a second. I was like, oh, okay. Similar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I used to like Sonic. I used to, too. I had it. They, they put one in Chicago, and I had it, and it didn't taste very good, so I didn't never went back. I don't I know. haven't been in a while. Yeah, I don't know if like it's because my taste buds have changed, um, or mm. it really was terrible. <laughs> it's gone downhill. It has it? Has. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought of one. Um, I'd love to hear like what some of your guys's favorite non-horror movies are. Um, I really like old movies. Um, I'm obsessed with Marilyn Monroe, um, oh. and I like silent films a lot. But um, my favorite movie of all time is Gone with the Wind. Aww. Yeah. It's a classic. I grew, I grew up watching it. Um, it was one of my grandma's favorites, and she passed away like a year after I was born. So it's kind of like Aww. the one thing that kind of connects us. So, yeah. yeah, I really like it, and it's one of my favorite books. So, Aww. Aww. Amazing. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, just because it's fresh on my mind, because I was telling Nina she had to watch it. The first nudie musical. <laughs> I think you've told me about this. I, one, I feel like yeah, we, we <laughs> talked about it. I think first in our Virginia Keene interview. Oh, um, mm -hmm. it's from the seventies. It is out there, uh, but it's amazing, and <laughs> I love it. Um, I don't know. Favorite non-horror movies. Like, I, there's just so many. I Mainly in the 80s and 90s comedies, really. Like, I, yeah. I specifically, I, I adore um, Campus Man. Um, I loved it, too. You got I, that for me. <laughs> I found the DVD and I sent it to you. That might be my favorite 80s comedy ever. It's good. <laughs> you weren't lying. Uh, it it fills me with joy and happiness from my childhood, and it, it was my um, second experience with Kathleen Wilhoit. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, I love John Dye so much and everything he's ever done, and uh, yeah. he was so talented. And um, he's no longer with us, but I was a big fan of his. Um, so I love that movie so much. That's got to be one of my most favorite movies. Another 80s comedy that's really hard to find. I've never been able to find it on DVD. Um, I found a ripped DVD from like an old crappy VHS. So it was a terrible, terrible version. But I've never found an official version. And that is Happy Together with Patrick Dempsey and Helen Slater. I haven't seen that. It is amazing and beautiful mm -hmm. and really needs to get an official release. Like, please. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I can watch it. Yes, yeah. it, is, it is so good. It's my one of my most favorite, favorite comedies ever. Um, but yeah, so those three are probably right up there. The first nudie musical might fall out of that ranking. That's just in my head right now. Sure. You know, <laughs> of the last month. So For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. What are your guys' favorite genres of movies not horror? Comedy. I mean, Comedy. my when I think about my favorite movies outside of horror, yeah, um, this this is Final Tap is mm -hmm. way at the top. I love anything Christopher Guest does, so I really love Best in Show as well. Um, I love things like Detroit Rock City, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Um, love, love, love Drop Dead Gorgeous. Cracks me up every time. So I guess I really like mockumentaries, comedies, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes something um, a little dramatic, I guess, but not not too often. On occasion. Yeah. I really like comedies a lot. Yeah. 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 I like the to laugh. The older, the better. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Um, Mark Conway says, Die Hard. He watches it every Christmas. Nice. Um, <laughs> Megan. Meg. Summer, Jamie, are you wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we plead the fifth on that one. I don't know. 
You can't see. I don't know. <laughs> right. I know, I know if you're really paying attention because I brought my leg over, you would know. Um, now they're going to go rewind the tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, enhance, enhance. <laughs> I have known Megan for 24 years. So wow. she knows me in my disdain for pants. <laughs> she's not just a, a listener. She's like my friend. <laughs> <laughs> she has all my secrets, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that was funny. Uh, for the horror movies, what's your favorite holiday horrors? Like, and favorite holiday in general for the horror? Like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, April Fool's Day. I'll take Friday the 13th, even though that's kind of cheating. Uh, yeah, that counts. Yeah, what you guys got? <laughs> I like Christmas. I like Christmas horror. I hate Christmas time in general. So horror Christmas movies that kind of like with a little spin on it. Um, it just kind of makes me warm inside to know that we've kind of twisted it a little bit and made it our own. Um, <laughs> but uh, I like Black <laughs> Christmas, the original. So It's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Um, I had a really sweet thing. I, I work for a newspaper and, um, you know, I, I do a newsletter. And so I had, I had said, hey, let me know your favorite Christmas movies, right? And um, one of my regular sources wrote me and he's like, huh, there's this sick one called Black Christmas. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, actually, that is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. So you you got it right. That's the best one ever. And it's got yeah. John Saxon being like so foxy, like, oh, he's like peak foxiness in that movie to me. So like <laughs> that is where this John that is where the JS scale came from is when we watch Black <laughs> Christmas. Um, so I oh I love Black Christmas so much. <laughs> Mark says gremlins. Gremlins uh, is good. classic. Christmas. Christmas is my favorite subgenre holiday horror. Christmas is mine too, but I wish there were more Valentine's ones because the couple that the few that we have are great. Um, I love Valentine and of course my bloody Valentine. And then I think of things like, you know, I watch Bride of Chucky um, for Valentine's Day, Bride of Frankenstein, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I wish there were more like Valentine, like actual Valentine's Day horrors because it's so like perfect. You got the hearts, you got love, candy, like pink. Hearts and boxes. Exactly. (laughs) Be mine. Like there's so many great, (laughs) so many great things you could do with the Valentine's horror. So that's what I want to see more of. (laughs) I want to see more April Fool's Day horror. I want to see more Thanksgiving horror for sure. Um, More Easter. Arbor Day, <laughs> Pulaski Day, Earth Day, <laughs> International Women's Day. Yes. <laughs> oh, there could be a great horror movie with that, though. There's something there. <laughs> yeah, there really is. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey. Um. Fourth of July, y'all. There should be more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As, have you all seen yet, Uncle Sam? Wants you. I watched it last last uh 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Thanks I have to not, you. But I'm going to now. <laughs> yes. Have to. It's a fun zombie 4th of July oh. movie. And I'm not a zombie fan. That is a subgenre I don't like usually at all ever. But It's been done a lot. Yes. Mm, uh, yeah. so I will uh, I will enjoy and love a few. The Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre is one, okay? Love that one. And um, so there's that one, and then um, oh, Uncle gee. Sam. I haven't oh, seen gee. it. I'm <laughs> sorry, I haven't seen it. I can't say. But I did say Jamie that Jamie needs to introduce me to her favorite Fulchies. Oh yeah, He's I like great. some. Oh, I'm glad you're a Fulci fan. Like I said, yeah. I love my Argento. I love all my Italian like maestros of horror, right? But for me, Fulci is the top top of the heap for sure just because he is Fulci's nasty like his movies are nasty you're gonna see some eyeballs pop you're gonna see some gooey stuff like love it <laughs> bad man <laughs> yes. yep yep oh so good all right I had about 
wraps it up for our audience question. Mike is in the house. Hi, Mike. We got Hi. Mike and Mark. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I, I think I'm pretty much done for the evening. My brain is tired. This yep. was fun, though. Yeah. It was fun. And we have to bring these lives back. We've been saying it for two years. And I think this might be what it took to get us to do it regularly again. Yeah, we should do some watch parties or something. We definitely should do some watch parties. So, so guys, comment on this. Let us know what movies you would like to see on a watch party. Let us know what you want to see done on the podcast. Because there are so many weeks where we're like, what movie should we do next? And Jamie's like, I don't know what's on the list. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where the list is. And we're like, <laughs> it's in here somewhere. <laughs> Mark says society on a watch party because we already did a podcast on that. So let's yeah. do that on a watch party. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, okay. I might have to have a beer in hand. Um, but yeah, we got to That would be so much fun. Oh my God. <laughs> Vodka. <laughs> yeah. I'll take some of that too. <laughs> take shots. Take shots oh, every yeah. time they say the word shunt. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we will die. <laughs> <laughs> um and metamortis says this was a great and he had they had fun so thank you for Aww. tuning in um yeah guys let us know what you want us to do on the show because sometimes we don't know when we're just like well we just pick one so we would love some guidance we want to know what you guys want so let us know yeah all right guys we will talk to you all later bye bye, bye.